Hello, my YouTube friends. Restream versus StreamYard. It's a showdown of two of the best browser-based live streaming apps out there. Which one is better? We're gonna find out today. So let's get to it. My analytics say that 80% of the folks watching my content are not subscribed. Am I doing something wrong? If so, let me know in the comments. But if you are looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber or live streamer, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. It's totally free. We're certainly not gonna pull any punches today. We're gonna tell it like it is. First, I'm gonna compare the feature sets that you can get with each software. Second, I'm gonna compare the ease of use for each piece of software. Third, I'm gonna break down adding guests to each app and show you it from the guest point of view as well. Fourth, I wanna compare the pricing, what each of these software include for free and how the feature tiers break down. And last but not least, I'm going to give you the pros and cons of each app and my personal recommendations. There are links to both StreamYard and Restream Studio in the description so you can check them out for yourself. And it's free to check them out, so why not do so? Let's dive into the features. Right off the bat, both Restream and StreamYard have green screen utilities as well as the ability to add and remove logos. Starting out here in Restream, there is an overlay function in the graphics section. You can add overlays that are already there or your own. In video clips, there are a bunch of countdowns already here. These countdowns add over top of your screen so that anything that's actually in the background is going to be overlaid. I did upload one of my own videos right here for my intro. You can also add background images. These will show up behind your layout when you're adding guests or something like that. And some of these are animated and they can look really pretty cool. Here in StreamYard, it's multimedia functions. It does have overlays that you can add and a video clip section that has a countdown timer in it as well. Once again, this is gonna go on top of the full screen and it also gives you the ability to add backgrounds. Back here in Restream, we're gonna take a look at the text capabilities. You can add and remove basically what I would say is lower thirds. You type up whatever you want. You can select them and add them right here. Over here in StreamYard, you can click on banners and add tickers to the bottom or you can actually create a lower third. Both of these tickers and banners for StreamYard and Restream can kind of be modified in the same area. Now Restream, if you click down here on the plus, you can add your own video file, a local video. It's going to show up here on the left and then you just click the slider to add it in and you can move this around by dragging it and dropping it over top of any of the windows that are already in there. And maybe the coolest feature in Restream is the ability to add background music right here. You just click on add background music and you can add royalty free tracks to your background. You just select one. It shows up over here on the left as if it were a guest. You can use the slider to add it and you can adjust the volume and the whole nine yards and you can even refresh it if you want it to start over from the beginning. And then if we move on to the chat feature for Restream Studio, it does have another unique feature here, the ability to have a chat overlay. If you turn this on, on the right hand side of your screen, all of your chat will show up as it scrolls down the screen. You can also select any piece of individual chat, click on it, and it will show up right down in the bottom left hand corner as a lower third as well. Back here in StreamYard, you can add a video file to your live stream just by clicking on share and selecting video file. Then you can select the video file and it will play on your screen and you can modify it with the layout buttons down at the bottom, depending upon where you want it. If you mouse over it, you can pause it or mute it if you would like. Then if we go over here into comments, when the stream is live, you're going to have your users being able to comment on your live stream and you can select any one of those comments and have it show up as a lower third just like that. The last feature I want to look at is screen sharing. Right here in Restream, if we click on this little computer icon, we can share our screen and it gives us the option of sharing the entire screen, the window, or the Chrome tab. If we flip over into StreamYard, you're going to see that when you click share screen, it is literally identical. You can share window, entire screen, or a Chrome tab. They both work exactly the same. Each of these does offer some pretty unique features, but how easy is each one to use? 
For ease of setup, I really just want to show you how long it would take if you just logged in and got ready to go live on each of these products. And we're going to start out with Restream. So here we are on the website. We're just going to go to log in and click log in. Now we can add a channel right here in the top left and you just select the one you want to add. You can connect it to your YouTube channel, which is what I'm going to do. It just walks you through the normal permissions and we allow it. And then we can create an event. All we need to do is click enter live studio up on the top right and that'll take us right into the live studio once we're in the live studio we want to go ahead and click this little gear button down here in the lower right and we can select our video input and we can select our resolution and then we're going to select our audio our microphone and last but not least our listening device so your speakers or your headphones or anything like that and you can also select your live stream quality what you want to live stream at now we can just hit the go live button in the top right hand corner and we're ready to go live so we're going to start out with StreamYard. we go up and we click login and we're just going to tell it what our gmail account is for our account and it's going to send us a login code to our gmail you just grab that code and put that code in here and boom it brings us right in now you can set up your destination we're going to click YouTube and then we can create a broadcast I'm going to delete this one here and you just select where you want to go you put the title of your live stream you put your description in you select your privacy then you can schedule it for later if you wanted to schedule your live stream you click create a broadcast and now we're ready to go we just enter the studio it's gonna bring us up to this screen where we're going to add our camera and microphone and you just click the gear button go ahead and select your camera and your audio and you want to select what you want to listen to your audio through if you have guests coming on and you can adjust your mic volume here and my camera didn't come up so I clicked refresh and right away it came up after refreshing the screen and then you just click enter studio and really all you have to do is add yourself to the live stream and you can click go live and you're ready to go with StreamYard. A huge reason why people use these apps is the guest adding features. So let's walk through how they work for the streamer and the guest. Now we're going to take a look at adding someone with Restream. So they get the link, they click on the link, it takes them to a web page. Once again, they have to allow their mic and their camera. Then you just come in to this screen right here. You can click on the microphone buttons or the little gear so that you can set up your microphone. You put in your name and you click join stream. It's really simple. Now over for the streamer, I'm just gonna click here and collect my link, send it out to individuals, and you see they show up here on the left-hand side. You just have to click this slider to add your guests and we'll add all of our guests here. And this actually looks pretty nice. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through all of the layouts that you can use. Once again, you can just drag and drop people into a different window if you want. I do like how the animations kind of flow in. It is really, really cool. And that is all the window setups. All three are pretty easy to add guests to. So here's how a guest would enter from StreamYard. They have the link, they click on the link, it opens up a web browser. That web browser is going to go ahead and ask you if you wanna add your camera. You can add your camera and allow. Then all you need to do is add your camera and microphone if it's not already added, but most times it will be. So all you need to do is put your name in the display name, check that your audio works, you can go into the camera here and adjust your camera settings and your microphone settings so your headphones are set up properly. But once you do, you just click enter the studio and you are in. As the streamer, what you're gonna do is grab this link right here in the invites, send it out to your friends. And now you can see down in the bottom, people are appearing and you just add each individual by clicking on their screen. You can remove them by clicking on their screen. We'll add everyone in. Now we have four folks and here are the different layouts that you can use. Some of these layouts are pretty cool and you can just drag and drop someone into a different window if you like. Now, both of these apps have free features 
and paid tiers. So let's look at each and compare what you get. With StreamYard for free, you get screen sharing, banners, on-screen comments, six on-screen participants or guests. You get your brand colors and your green screen. You can stream anywhere. StreamYard branding in all streams. Of course, for free, they're gonna brand the streams, but you do have streaming limits. You can stream for 20 hours a month and it resets every month. Now, once you bump up to the basic for $25 a month, you get a lot more. You get everything in the free plan. Plus, they remove the branding. You can stream unlimited, 10 on-screen participants. You can add your own logos, your own overlays, your own backgrounds. You can use a custom RTMP, record up to four hours of stream, and of course, multi-stream to three different destinations. For the professional, you can record up to eight hours, multi-stream to eight destinations. You get your full HD and individual audio recordings, which is pretty nice. Restream does have a very comprehensive free section. You get to stream unlimited, on-screen comments and captions, chat overlays, screen sharing, background music, high-res audio, and up to six stream participants. Now, you basically get the exact same thing for $19 a month with a few more stream participants. And you really don't get anything additional until you move up to professional at $49 a month. And then you can remove the watermark, add the custom graphic overlays, the video uploads, stream in full HD, and split the audio tracks for recording, which is a really cool feature. All that's left are my thoughts on each app. So which one is best? This one is a really interesting comparison. Restream offers a lot of things for free, including unlimited streaming for absolutely no dollars a month. Whereas with StreamYard, you get 20 hours a month and it resets at the end of every month. But I haven't done a video on StreamYard in about a year and I've gotta be honest with you, I don't know what the heck they've been doing for this last year because everyone else seems to be really adding and creating better products. And Restream at this point I feel has really surpassed what StreamYard was doing a year ago and then some. When you look at these free products, just the number of layouts that you can choose from when you're adding guests and things like that, it's ridiculous. StreamYard hasn't added one in over a year. Restream Studio has a whole bunch of layouts and they all look really good and the transitions between those layouts look really epic as well. And you get all that for free. Now there are good reasons why you would pick StreamYard over Restream. For one, you can pay $25 and remove the branding. And I think that's important. If you're going to actually pay for a streaming tool, well, you should actually pay enough to remove the branding. You can't remove the branding on Restream until you pay $50. And $50 might just be a bridge too far. The other thing is the pricing stream structure for Restream is pretty goofy in my opinion. All you get with the mid-tier is a few extra guests. You don't actually really get anything above the free tier until you pay the 50 bucks. And if you're going to use Restream in a professional way, you're going to want to remove the branding, which means you're probably going to pay the 50 bucks. But for the 50 bucks, you get a whole heck of a lot with Restream, a lot more than you get with StreamYard. And once you bump up to that $50 price range, there really is no comparison. You you just get so much more for $50 from Restream than you do from StreamYard. I've got to ask myself because at one point I really did love StreamYard and its simplicity is really, really nice. But I don't understand why they're not making any effort whatsoever to even keep up with the people that were behind them a year ago. Come on, StreamYard, it's time to step up your game. With that being said, if you're a StreamYard user and you enjoy it, it is very simple. It's easy to use and keep using it because you got to use what you like. But in my personal opinion, if I was choosing between the two of these, I just think that Restream is a better value for free and it's a much better value for $50. And I wouldn't even bother with the middle tier on either of these because you just don't get enough. It doesn't make any sense. Now, don't forget, there are links in the description for each one of these so you can have a look for yourself. And let me know what you think in the comments. If you want a more in-depth look at StreamYard or or Restream Studio, check one of these videos out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber or live streamer, subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.